So the three things that you are going to need for this, you're going to need a the slides that LKR provided with the graphics of uh, the music graphics. The, the, you've got the measures, the chords. I actually use a different set of chords that I stole from the uh, the songbook. Then you're going to need to create a blank slide in a separate PowerPoint and you're going to want to delete all that stuff and then what you're going to do is basically build the chart. Today we're going to be building We Are Never Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift. So I look for the chords online or you can learn them by ear yourself or whatnot. Um, I'm picking these for a couple reasons. One, the chords just repeat over and over uh, throughout the song which is really nice. It's not too complicated of a song to get started with. They're all open chords in the original recording. Uh, you don't need a capo or anything like that. Uh, and the chords are just C, G, D, and E minor. I'm going to use simplified versions of it, even though the chords themselves are a little more complicated than that. Um, so I'm going to take my measures. I'm going to take a four bar repeated measure. Um, I added the repeat signs to this uh, using a screenshot, um, just because it was a graphic that I use so often, it was easier to move one tool around than three. And I'm just going to make it a decent size. I'm going to go to the chords, but I'm going to use the other chords that I have already in my other slides. You can see I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. Um, as I'm going through this, I'm just finding those chords that I need, copying and pasting them. You can also see some examples of other layouts that I have. You can see how these are all just graphics, um, images kind of pieced together. So I'm just piecing together the song to do, I need to find that C chord. There it is. Some of these are incomplete. As you can tell, they're not online. <laughs> now I'm just going to resize anything that I want, depending on how big it is, make it look really nice, get all the chords in the right order. Always make sure you get your chords in the right order. Um, it's always good to double check your chords because it's nice when you're not, when you don't have to go back and fix them afterwards after you've already made all the slides. Um, so we're just going to resize everything, get it to be the right shape. Now they're all pretty even. Yeah. Okay. And add the title. We are never getting back together. 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 Taylor Swift. And then I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. There you go. And now I'm ready to go. So what I need to do is save this as a PDF and I'll save it to my desktop. Now I can close out the browser. I can close out PowerPoint. And here it is. Gonna go through the thumbnails, and you'll see the song there. Great. Now, before I do too much, um, let's see, I'm gonna open this up. Great. Now, I wanna before I uh, start, I wanna make a new folder on my desktop just to help organize things called. We are never getting back together. This seems like a lot of steps, but it's actually, it goes pretty streamlined once you get good at it. I'm opening up my toolbox and I want to go to the square tool. And you can change the color and the size depending on what you want. I've just sort of defaulted to this one. Um, I think it looks good. I'm going to go through and change the size that. I fit it around the cord that I want, just as you'd see. Now I'm going to save. I want to make sure, oh, sorry, not save, duplicate. I'm going to duplicate this slide, and then I'm going to save it. As a JPEG, very important, it has to be a JPEG. And I'm going to call it one, which is arbitrary. I'm going to put it in my folder, 
and then I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to repeat this process for every slide. So I'm going to take that box, drag it around the next chord, duplicate the slide, there's a hotkey for it, um, shift command S, so that might speed up the process. Name it two, hit save, save as. Slide it, repeat. And make one for every chord. So this can take a little bit of time if you have like 12 chords in a song or if you have two slides to work with. Um, I've had some songs as many as 24 or 25 slides. Um, that's why I picked this one for starters, just because it's nice and easy. Only four. Great, we can close this out. And the next thing we want to do is open up iMovie. And we're going to create a new project. Call it the name of the song. We are never getting back together. Then uh, two things I want to go into my project properties. That's under the file fold, uh, tab, and I want to change the file, title fade duration to zero and the uh, initial photo placement from Ken Burns to fit to frame, or fit in frame. Sorry. And I'm going to take my slides. I'm going to drag them in to. My project. Close out that box and there you have it. All my slides are in there and now I go down to the music icon there. I'm going to search for my song We Are Never Getting Back Together which is in my iTunes library and then I pull it in. All right so now we just have to edit everything together so we want to find out where the first chord change is and change that. So that's right there, where, oops, about right there where it switches to the G chord. What's cool is if you slowly drag the cursor over this, you can really hear those changes. Boom. Right there it goes to the D chord, so I'm just going to cut everything else out. It's a little bit on the late side, so I want to cut it out. I always go early as opposed to late because I don't want it arriving at that chord late. I'd rather it say it's the chord so that the student over anticipates that change. And it's going to be basically. So now what we do is we copy these images, paste them. Now obviously these are going to all line up first, especially since there's a little bit of silence there at the beginning. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them the same length as the average of all of these. So it's uh, 8, 13, 11. Um, let's see what happens if I do 3.11. Um, a good thing to note is that this here is not 3.11 seconds, um, actually the it's not, as you notice, it's not a point, it's got a, a colon. Um, after the colon is what's tenths of a, it's a single frame, which is a, t a thirtieth of a second. So this is three and eleven thirtieths of a second, so about a third of a second. I remember when we broke up. Oh, whoops, that should be one and eleven. There we go. I remember when we broke up. And it's looking pretty good. Saying, this is it, I've had enough. Cause like Great, now you just copy that. Do it a few times. We haven't seen each other in a month when you said you needed space. What? Then you come. And it's getting a little bit on the early side, so I might make it a little bit longer. Um, and earlier I had said to go into the project properties and change the 
initial photo placement to fit to frame. And the reason we do that is so we can add a frame in there. So for example, whenever I want an image to pop up on the screen like this, and I wanted to say repeat forever, ever. Uh, forever is one word, not. And I want that to pop up. I don't want it to like slowly drag up on the screen. I want it to just immediately pop up. So it's just, especially if you get a lot of information coming at once, if it has like a slow fade in and a slow fade out, sometimes it doesn't show up quickly enough. I remember when we broke up the first time. Now we just go through and we make sure everything is lined up. Cause like we hadn't seen each other in a month when you said you needed space. What? Then you come around again and say, baby, I miss you and I swear I'm gonna change. Trust me, remember how that lasted for a day? I said, I'm gonna make two of these at 11.12 or 11 and 12 thirtieths. And sorry, one and 12, and then two of them at 11. And I think that's gonna make it line up a little bit easier. So, obviously, the fine tuning, um, you can kind of you get the gist of it. And you kind of just kind of walk through, make frames longer or shorter, depending on what you need. And then you copy it all the way through the song, and there you go. Uh, and you just make everything lines up, line up. If you have multiple slides, or if you're dealing with songs with different sections, you just have to make sure that the correct slide is showing up at the correct time for the correct amount of time. And that's what gives it this illusion of the red box changing. Um, that's basically it. Uh, go through until you're done with your song. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment, and I will gladly answer that as soon as I'm available.